right now all you can really hear are birds, which is a good thing. But normally, pretty soon, any minute now, we're gonna hear that drone of cicadas. And here's my question for you. Some people hate that sound of cicadas in summer and some people love it because it reminds them of summer. So I would love to know which camp you fall into. Pretty soon it will almost be so loud it will be deafening. So let me know if you are someone that likes that sound because you associate it with summer or you dislike it because you associate it with the heat of summer. So let me know, there's my question of the day. Well, come on in everyone, clank, clank. This is gonna be kind of a fun walkabout because it's all about color, which is something you guys aren't necessarily used to seeing in my garden. Now, it, it at first blush, it doesn't look like I have a whole lot of intense hues, but I do have some, particularly as we round the bend. So my favorite color this year, let me deadhead this geranium here, is this kind of, pinky corally red. I'm not exactly sure what the, the exact hue on the color spectrum would be, but I love it. And so do hummingbirds because this arrangement here has attracted so many hummingbirds. And I love it because I can look out my kitchen window and I can see the hummingbirds just really attracted to this. Now, something else that's kind of fun and a reason that you guys might want to use some of this core liner as mulch. So, you know, you get those core liners to hanging baskets and sometimes they decompose and you have these core fibers. Well, I sometimes save this and I use it to mulch my pots with to top dress them. Now, another reason I do it is because birds love this. They come in and they try to steal some of it for their own nests, which is just fine for me, because then I noticed that they play in this little arrangement that I've got on my table. They hide inside the topiary, the little wrens and the little sparrows do, and they just literally play and hide in here. And I think part of that is because they're attracted to this core fiber. So, so it's, it's just kind of a fun thing. I love later in the afternoon is when they, you wouldn't think that would be their time of day to get active, but they are. And again, I can look out my office window or my kitchen window and they really go to town. So that's very fun. So you can see that that color kind of continues over here in more geraniums. And I make sure that I am feeding them enough this time of year because there's, they get watered so much that a lot of the nutrients leach out. So I make sure that I feed them enough once a week. And I usually use just some kind of liquid fertilizer, some kind of water soluble uh, hose end fertilizer so that they'll continue to pump out these new buds. And I just love the way they look in my little geranium theater over here. And I also love it because I showed you this the other day. This Encore Azalea is a problem solving plant and it's in this same color. And this is the perfect spot for them, I've noticed. It's not too hot and not too bright and sunny. It gets just enough protection, but enough light that it's blooming really, really well. So I just love that. And I love the fact that Stuart, if you don't mind kind of pointing in that direction, then it just picks up on that color as we progress through the garden. And as we go, you'll see, for me, what's a lot more color beginning to appear. My friend Carrie said, wow, I'm not used to seeing so much color in your garden. Well, it's that time of year. So this geranium that you have seen many times before is also putting out another huge flush of bloom. And I love the color echo of the interior of these petals and how they mimic and repeat that same color that I just showed you, that deep corally pink. And then there are a few hydrangeas that are still pumping out some colorful blooms. Not a lot, most of them got frozen out in the Arctic blast, but some of these that bloom on new wood are spitting out just, just a few more hydrangeas. So now let's come around this way 
And Stuart, if you just want to kind of pan into the distance, you'll see that this is where the color begins. So I've got my hanging baskets of angel wing and dragon wing begonias, which is probably my very favorite annual right now, in addition to geraniums, but I just love them. And I love them in moss planted in huge hanging baskets or in huge saucers. And behind it, I've got some Rudbeckia lacinato, which I talked a little bit about, I think, on Instagram. And this just, this, this is just a great yellow color that stands up to the strong sun this time of year. And in fact, I'm getting ready to plant some more of it, and I'll show you where. This clump right here was gifted to me by a friend of mine. I divided it in the spring and I planted some over there just beyond the finial across from the potage and I just love it. Pollinators love it. It can handle the heat and I also love it because when it first erupts it's got these just beautiful tufts of kind of cut leaf flowers. I think it's also called cut leaf cone flower and it is a great plant for our southern gardens. All of the oak leaf hydrangeas are beginning to fade just as the white weddings begin to come out. And there is a whole drift of them that goes all the way back to the fence. These were the, the same ones that I had in urns for three years. And this year I put them in the ground and they're starting to mature and every year these flower heads are going to get bigger and bigger. This is a southern living plant. These white weddings, they are just, they're really indestructible. So then if we can kind of navigate around all of my myrtle topiaries that are out here in full sun, because they love the full strong sun and heat of this time of year, you can see th that I've got some bubble gum. This is a proven winter plant. I've got a bubble gum petunia in here. And there are some late, very late planted lilies that are gonna be coming into bloom before too long. This needs a little bit of cutting back and a little bit of deadheading, but this color pink I think looks really pretty with this tall phlox that was gifted to me in this pink color and then there'll be dahlias in the front and then miraculously, miraculously the wajilia is still pumping out these fuchsia colored blooms that again the hummingbirds and the pollinators just love so these things have normally kind of given up the ghost by this time of year in the heat but this year they just keep pumping out flowers so yes i do have a little bit more color than normal. And on the other side, I've got some dead cotoneaster in here that needs to come out. But look here, these Echinacea purpurea purple cone flowers. This is just kind of the common native variety, but it's just so pretty and it gives another little shot of pink below the wajilia. And I've got dahlias that'll come into bloom later. And then look at this. I've shown you this before, but this huge, magnificent saucer filled with these dragon wing begonias. Now here's a tip, you guys. If you want a really large saucer, concrete saucer, these can be very, very expensive. But this is just the top of a bird bath and I have set it inside of a plant stand to elevate it so these can kind of cascade down. And this works brilliantly and they're not expensive at all. And it doesn't have to be just a simple saucer like this. And don't you love the moss on it? It can be a fluted saucer, it can be almost any kind. And the nice thing about it is there is a hole in the bottom of it where it sits and nestles into the stone base and that's what provides you your drainage. So it gets great drainage. That pot, by the way, I bet I've had those same begonias for four years. I just put them in the greenhouse and they come back. Weirdly enough, if Stuart, if you can back up a little bit, the, the Chinese snowball viburnum is still putting out some white flowers and it's got lots of new buds for next year. 
So this is, I normally have a really tight, confined color palette, but this year, because things are just a little bit wonky and blooming out of sequence and blooming more heavily than they normally do this time of year, there's a lot of different colors. Um, I've got all of this purple going on right here with the scabiola and these purple wave petunias, some scabiosa here, some salvia forensia. These are all growing in my baskets. And I've got lots of gold coleus, which might clash just a little bit with the color of this gold sturm rudbeckia, but it is one of my bulletproof plants. Makes a great cut flower. And I always say that there are sub-seasons within seasons. So the sub-season that in my mind this is, is late summer, and I think of it as, as rudbeckia or black-eyed Susan season, the sub-season within summer. So in the past, I used to have an expanse of gold sturm rudbeckia that just really traveled all the way in front of this low fence. And then it just got to be too much. So too much of anything, even if it's a good thing, is still too much. So I removed a lot of it. I transplanted it around. I gave it to other people and I just have a little bit of it instead of a lot of it because I like this foliage over here, which also provides color. This is the orange rocket southern living plant with golden barberry because this, the reason I like it is it it just holds its color and its form better year round. Pretty soon, even this bulletproof plant, this Goldstone Rudbeckia is gonna start to flag and I'm gonna have to deadhead it and it just requires a little bit more work. So, come in here, let me move my hose. And there's still a hint of this kind of feathery color that is just, just little tufts still of this Veronica that's in bloom, this lavender Veronica. It's got kind of an ethereal look to it. And some of that is still in bloom. And pretty soon, Stuart, if you don't mind showing, you can see that my I'll start get it, getting color from my tomatoes. I've got all sorts of cherry tomatoes, most of which, by the way, you guys, I hardly ever buy tomatoes. Most of these just all came back. They volunteered from last year, and these are the ones that I just relocate to where I want them to grow. And because they were tough enough to survive an Oklahoma winter, I'm thinking they can be tough enough to hopefully survive our summer. Again, I plant my tomatoes late because it gets so hot, I don't want them to peak during the heat. So I, I plant them a little bit later because I find they do better just prior to fall. And that's when I get my best crop because I don't, I don't uh, do repeat plantings of them. So I, kind of let them do their thing a little bit later than most. And then over here, I've got more of this wonderful, brilliant yellow. And I decided as I was looking, looking back from, from the house and from the yard into this direction, I decided that I needed another big tuft of verticality and of that, that really vibrant yellow down here. So my buddy Roger that you guys have seen in different garden tours, he brought me a pot of this just yesterday. And so I'm gonna plant some of this in here and it will bloom at the same time. And then I'll frame, I'll be able to frame this bed on both ends. The other reason that I'm planting it here in this vicinity is I wanted something that will kind of complement the verticality of the bird uh, of the birdhouse post, and I think this will do that. So I'll get this in here and get this established, and then pretty soon all of this phlox, which I cut back hard, I gave it a hard Chelsea chop at the beginning of the season, it will all bloom in that vibrant pinky purple. 
And then I have zinnias coming up in here. And because I got everything done later this year, later than earlier because of my, my book deadline, I just planted a hanging basket here that's got some of these sweet little yellow zinnias and more coleus. Normally by now, there is, this is filled with color, but because I got everything in so late, it's a little bit tardy. But pretty soon, I'm gonna get, there'll be lots more color in here. Now, let me show you a little trick I did. Here's a little garden hack. So have you ever noticed, Stuart, I'm gonna switch places with you. Have you ever noticed sometimes your zinnia will topple over, you'll have a really tall zinnia and it will topple over and then it will start putting out shoots, vertical shoots from where there was a leaf node. Now, I don't wait for them to topple over, I give them a nudge. So I go ahead and bend them over when the cane and when the stem is still pliable, and then I secure it with a little floral pick. So see if I remove this pick, you can see it was up like this. Then to the extent you can make something go vertical, go horizontal, what it will start doing, this has a little bit of a leaf miner. I'll just clip that off with my finger, but it won't keep it from blooming beautifully. It then will send up vertical shoots from each leaf node. So instead of just having one tall zinnia, I will ultimately have three blooming opportunity opportunities coming up from this because instead of one vertical, it's called a, it's called, I believe, apex, apex dominance. These will start going vertical and I will get a bloom off of every one of these instead of just one tall one that I deadhead. So I will do that. You can see I've done it with this one too. I bent it over and secured it with a floral clip and it will do the same thing. I'll get a vertical stem coming up from that leaf node. So that's just a fun way to get more out of less. And instead of waiting for them to topple, I kind of prematurely topple them and do it intentionally. So that's kind of what's going on in here. A little more color than I normally have. Very much delayed because I got a late start on everything, but fortunately the weather gods were benevolent and we've had pretty good rain and it hasn't been too terribly hot. I don't think we've reached 100 this year, have we, Stuart? Which is pretty amazing for Oklahoma. So there you go, a little bit more color than I normally have in my garden for those of you guys that are color levels and your lovers and you're always begging me to plant just a little bit more vibrancy in my garden. Here is my ensemble du jour. My sunglasses are from Target. I just got these shades and I really, really like them. They're just tortoise shell, just basics. My earrings I've had forever. I just like basic hoops. You could probably find some of these on Amazon and I'll try to put a link below. I love the line. You can tell that I was recently at Target. I hadn't been in I don't know how long, but I got this shirt from there. This is a new day and I love that line. It's a line within Target called a new day and I really like that stuff. Um, these shorts are J. Crew. I've had them forever and ever and ever. I, I bet a dozen years and my boots are hunter boots. Love them. If you're going to splurge on a pair of boots, if you only have one pair of tall boots, make sure that they are hunters. And there's your fashion epilogue for today. Mm -hmm.